Hello everybody, uh, Trevor Blake again, and this time with a few words about uh, the science behind the law of attraction. So it's, it's odd that in the recessions and depressions, I hear people referring to law of attraction more than I do at any other time. And I think it's because, you know, people find themselves in circumstances that they would, you know, there's a great um, phrase, you know, experience is the thing that's happening to me. I wish to God was happening to someone else. You know, when you find yourself in difficult um, circumstances, we tend to look for, for help. And uh, one of the places people will look is self-help, etc. Um, I've gone on record as saying I'm not a fan of self-help. I'm, I'm, I don't consider myself a self-help guru at all. I consider myself a scientist. And um, I'm a very pragmatic uh, businessman. But I understand uh, that everything in, the, in life is energy. Everything's made up of the same thing. We're all made up of 12 particles of matter, four forces of nature. And you can squeeze those 12 particles down into two categories, fermions and bosons. And that's it. So the trees behind me, um, the table, the computer, me, everything is made up of exactly the same things, just all vibrating at a different, a different uh, a frequency and, 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 you know, all sort of mixing together in a different way that gives each of us our identity. Me as a human and the trees behind me as the tree behind me. Uh, I understand all of that. The challenge with self-help is that most people don't understand any of that. But what they do is that they, they write concepts that people would love to be true. And they're very uplifting books and they make you feel good and that's the problem with them. They make you feel good about the life you have. Whereas what you really want is a better life. And the only way to get a better life is to use tools and techniques that actually work, that have scientific validation. So if I do this right now and I do that tomorrow and I do this at, you know, the day after and all this, things will change for the better for me and I will be able to get out of my version of quicksand and live the better life that I want and not the life that I don't want. And self-help books typically, not all of them, but most of them, don't do that. And that's the challenge I have with the self-help books that focus on the law of attraction. You know, the, the, the prose is beautiful and they give the impression that, you know what, you just need to sit in a chair and, you know, think positively. And that's bollocks. Sorry, but it's bollocks. First of all, there's no such thing as positive thinking. Our thoughts are made in 500 milliseconds. You do not have the time to stand in front of a negative thought. You can't stop it. You see something you don't like, you hear something you don't like, you have a negative thought. There's nothing wrong with that. What you have control of is how you react to the negative thought you just had. And so you react forward in a more positive way. And that's not positive thinking, that's positive reaction. It's a very subtle, but as so important difference. And with the law of attraction, it is true that you can sit back and relax. And you can do certain tools and techniques. You can't just sit there and hope for a better life. You can sit there and use tools and techniques, particularly using the mind and the imagination, and you will attract to yourself a much better version of your life. But you have to know how it works in order to have the confidence in the tools and techniques to put your energy level at a point where you're going to attract to yourself the good stuff. So I've always ranted and raved a little bit about um, self-help books. I'm probably a little anti-self-help authors if I'm, if I'm being truthful because the majority of self-help books are written by people whose only success in life is the fact that they wrote a book that caught on for some reason. Uh, Napoleon Hill is a classic example. That, that book, Think and Grow Rich, has sold 70 million copies. He started and failed 25 businesses and he was a charlatan. Clemens loved him. W. Clemens just absolutely loved him and on his deathbed uh, bought the rights for him and set up his foundation. He himself was um, a snake oil salesman. Most people don't know this. And they read that book, and that book makes you feel really good about your ability to change your life, but there are zero tools and techniques that work from a scientific perspective. And I'm a scientist, okay, so, so whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know. My, my first degree is in radiation physics and nuclear medicine, so I'm a physicist, basically. And so I need proof, and I need evidence, and I like to... St I like, I like, uh, to test things out and, and, and produce data and show that if you do this, this will change things. If you do that, nothing's gonna happen. That's how I've kind of lived my life. And the way I learned these things was, was basically I read hundreds of biographies when I was younger. And in, in those biographies, I didn't read self-help books because they irritated the hell out of me because they just, they just sounded great but didn't give any practical advice. After reading the book and putting it down, I was thinking, okay, what do I do now? Well, I picked the book up and read it again because it felt so good. And that's all I got out of them. And so, anyway, I found myself in a place where I ended up reading a load of biographies. 
And I saw in these biographies of these great successful men and women in all different aspects of life, pioneers, adventurers, business people, musicians, artists, didn't, you know, whatever they did, I saw these patterns of behavior. And I made a mental note of them, and there were basically three of them. And, um, and, so, and, and I researched them scientifically. What, what is it that they're doing, and why is that working? And then I, I convinced myself that, you know what, if it worked for them, and I can see scientific reason why it should work, then I'll use it for myself and see if I can get out of my version of quicksand. And at the time, I was living in sort of abject pro poverty with no prospects. And then since then, I've had this great, um, just, you know, uh, just a gift of a life of adventure and, uh, and travel and, and, and successful entrepreneurship and all the rest of it, and happy marriage and, uh, you know, just I'm, I'm very blessed and very lucky. Uh, but I realise that, that I'm very blessed and very lucky, not because I sat in a chair and hoped for something better, but because I worked really hard on these tools and techniques and made them habits in my life and changed my prospects that way. I changed it from, you know, the kingdom of God is within, as they say, so I changed it from inside. And that made all the difference. So something happened. So, so uh, I just sold my first company and uh, I said to my wife, you know, I've been working since I was 17. We've, we've made out good here. I'm going to take a little sabbatical. And she rolled her eyes because she knows me and didn't think I would. And uh, two weeks of pacing the floor, the kitchen floor, you know, she, she had a knife in her hand actually at the time. And she said, Trevor, if you, I know, I know I'm in trouble, I'm Trev, okay, but, but if I'm in trouble, it's Trevor. So she said, Trevor, if you don't start something new right now, I'm going to kill you. And it just so happened that that night I was going to the airport to pick her mother up who was coming to stay with us for, for three weeks. And I was pacing the air, I was there early, so I was pacing the airport and I went into the uh, newsstand and started looking at the latest business books. And there was this new self-help book and it was a promoted stand that had like 20 copies. And, um, you know, companies pay a huge amount of money to promote these books, by the way. And um, the front cover was of the author and behind him was a stained glass window and over his head was kind of a halo, like a, like a shining light. It was utterly nauseating. And um, I flicked through it and it was just basic, it was rubbish really. It was basically taking religious quotes out of their historical and societal context, which makes them meaningless, and beating you over the head with it to say, this is how you should live today. It was, it, I mean, I, if, I, if someone had given it to me, I, I would have put it in the trash can. But I was shocked to read that this guy was a multi-million dollar author. And so I researched him later, and it was because he'd been on Oprah Winfrey four times, basically. He'd done nothing in his life. He was, he was a drug addict and an alcoholic, not, and that's a lot of people are, and they get out of that, and that's really important. But that was pretty much it. And uh, and uh, he talked about how you can, how he could change, you know, how you could change your life based upon his experiences of being an alcoholic and a and, and a drug addict, and um, and turning to religion. And I, I, it just befuddled me, and it really frustrated me. But the core context of what he was saying was the law of attraction, and the law of attraction it it was proven in the Bible, or some non complete utter nonsense like that. So so uh, frustrated the hell out of me. So I, I said to Lynn, oh, I'm, I'm going to write the book I've been talking about for the last five years or whatever it had been. And she said, oh, thank God for that. Um, and that's when I wrote Three Simple Steps. And it was these three simple, and they are simple, but they're not easy because you have to become habits. But these, these three simple changes in behavior that you must undertake in order to get out of the quicksand and, and live the life of your dreams. And, and with these three concepts come practical tools and techniques. And that's the most important thing. And that, that's what I was trying to do. And then when I sat back from writing the book and, and the book went off and had its own adventure. It, it didn't sell anywhere near as many as other people who'd written about law of attraction, etc. Because I didn't get invited onto Oprah Winfrey's show, but um, but it still did pretty well by itself, and uh, and I'm very proud of it. And a lot of people have had fantastic experiences as a result of it. So that's all good. But when I step back from it and I put the three pieces together, I think, well, you know what? I'm talking about the same thing. I'm talking about the law of attraction, and it made me nervous because I was thinking, well, there's no evidence for the law of attraction. And then in 2012, the amazing particle physicists and theoretical physicists at, at uh, CERN in Switzerland uh, finished an experiment that proved for the first time a theory that existed for 100 years. And here's how it goes. So we're all made up of 12 particles of matter, four forces of nature. The 12 particles can be squeezed into two categories called fermions and bosons. Don't worry about the labels, it's just the names of the people that, that uh, discovered it. And one argument was that there has to be something in between all these particles that binds it all together. And the other argument is it's empty space. And then all of a sudden the proof came that there's no empty space. And this is magical. And so what they prove is that all of the universe is connected 
by a type of cosmic glue and they have to give it a name so they named it the Higgs field and the Higgs was the guy that had kind of uh, in the 60s had kind of proved the theory that the Higgs field must exist and one day we'll discover it and prove it and so it's now called the Higgs field. This Higgs field connects everyone to everything, everything to everyone, everyone to everyone, everything to everything. One for all and all for one. And it's magical. But here's the beauty of this thing too. If this Higgs field didn't exist, we now know that as particles and forces, we would shoot through the universe at the speed of light. And we'd never experience this. This wouldn't exist to us. And what this, this Higgs field does is it works like a sort of cosmic glue. And we slow down in it, our particles and all the rest of it slow down in it. And in slowing down, they gain mass. And in gaining mass, we get to experience matter and solidity. And so we live our life experience as a three-dimensional, five-sensory human being with emotions purely because the Higgs field exists through the whole universe. And that's a beautiful thing, and it's good to understand that. But here's the beautiful thing, and back to the law of, law of attraction. Knowing this, then I also know that if I deliberately focus my intention in a certain direction through the Higgs field, I can connect with anyone or anything. The Higgs field connects the whole universe. Therefore, if I go back towards the Big Bang, I go back in time. If I go forward into the unknown universe, I go into the future. And I can connect with anything and anything in any direction. And therefore, if I use my tools and techniques in a slightly different way, if I use my imagination in a very clever way, which we, which we you know, I, I talk about in all of, if you go to my website, this is what we talk about. If you use these tools and techniques, then you can identify the situation you find yourself in. You can say to yourself, this isn't what I want in my life. What I want is this. And then you can set out to find the solutions of that simply by connecting through the Higgs field. It's a beautiful, beautiful concept, but it's now proven by science. And this is the true law of attraction. This isn't a feel good, wouldn't life be great, sit in a chair, have some daydreams type of concept. This is a practical, pragmatic, do these things, these tools and techniques that I can provide for you that I talk about on my website. And you can connect in specific ways through the Higgs field and you can achieve absolutely any experience that you want. And the proof of the pudding is always in the eating of it. Since I've been talking about this in the last few years and people who have, have come to listen and have then tried the tools and techniques for themselves, their adventures and their experiences have been beyond anything I could have possibly imagined that they would achieve. And many of them achieved much, much more than I have achieved because I'm generally satisfied with my life. So I'm not actually trying to go out there and achieve, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to become the next Amazon killer or the, or the Google killer or anything. I'm really quite happy with my companies as I am and my life and my animals and all this as I am. But everybody else who's saying, okay, I want to go and achieve this, off they go and they're achieving amazing things. And this is the new law of attraction, if you like, a law of attraction backed by science. And I hope you find that interesting and I hope you find it curious and would like to know more, in which case just go to my website and start reading. I have an archive of, of, of articles and podcasts and you name it and, uh, and you'll discover it for yourself.